Hi, welcome to the show. Here we are again. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I sat down with Stephanie Aleman, or Aleman, if you will, and we had a lengthy discussion on her career. She is a actress, model, and author. We also talk about uh, publishing her books, women's body image in the media, scams, and how to avoid them. Model culture can sometimes take a turn for the worst, and I fear for these young girls. We're going out there, you know, unknowingly into uh, situations that could put them in harm's way. So please stay tuned, be aware. Let's go down the rabbit hole again with Stephanie Aleman. Well, here we are. Uh, welcome to Pop Therapy Pod. I'm, <laughs> I'm here with Stephanie. Now, do you pronounce it Ailman or Ailman? It's, it's Ailman. Aleman. Aleman. That's a good way yeah. to pronounce it, too. Thank you. Is that the um, is the Hispanic version? Or? I believe so. It, it is um, from German. Originally. German. Oh, okay. And so my I adopted it from my husband. Cool. Well, we're in San Diego, so it's safe to ask that question. I feel like, however, I don't always feel comfortable asking that. To be honest, it's just like I'm so used to it around here because we have such a colorful Hispanic population here, mm-hmm. and they're very proud. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they protest and wave their flag, and I think it's really important to keep up the spirit, the good spirit, and your ethnicity and culture. I'm very proud. I'm actually Mexican, so I'm Mexican-American, and so my husband is Salvadorian. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. So you got a little mixture in there, a little uh, of that Latin uh, Latin um flavor i don't like saying that word (laughs) it's okay though i'm fine i'm all right anyway um i'm so happy to have you on we're not here to talk social justice or anything right now but (laughs) thank you for having me i'm very excited and grateful thank you so much Venetia. of course thanks for doing this you know i'm always um glad to have somebody on who's inspiring i always look for people who are trying to make a difference or have something to say and that's how I found you I just did my little uh, well you kind of popped up like you know people you know or people you can meet and stuff like that so uh, here we are oh thank you let's get into what you do like um what drew you initially to or it's modeling and um, acting so I have uh, I'm actually a medical um, specialist which entails as medical clerk. Mm-hmm. And so I do that all as full time right now with this going on with this um, pandemic. And, um, but on the side, I have always thought about other people. What can, how can I help? How this individual like myself, how can I help other people inspire or motivate? Mm-hmm. And so um, in social media, you'll see a lot of people mo- uh, model, right? Yep. Like influencers. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I, I can't be an influencer. But as I kept searching and everything, um, I started, I got inspired by one of my colleagues who said, Stephanie, how come you don't try doing modeling? So I said, you know what? It's not really my forte. I'm more into voiceover. I think that's really awesome. But then she mentioned, well, you know, you have a pretty face. You should at least try with with wigs. And I said, oh, I love changing my hair. I would love to do that. Mm-hmm. So initially, it wasn't something that I wanted to do. It's just that it came about. And so I met this famous um, voiceover actress. Her name is Debbie Derryberry. Um, she's the voice of Jimmy Neutron and Frankie Laura and many other cartoons. Have you heard of her? I've not heard that. I've heard of those cartoons, though, obviously. I mean, they're very popular, and so I definitely have heard of them. So when she told me, when she was training, because she's my coach, she actually said, Stephanie, why don't you go to the school of acting so you could get your foot more in the door? 
I said, okay, I'll go for that. So then I decided to Google San Diego uh, talent and things like that. And so um, my school is called Tower Talent Studio West. And I started back in 2011. Are you familiar with that school? Um, I've not heard of it before, no. Please tell me about it. Oh, well, they were here in Mission Valley, so they just recently relocated oh. um, out um, North County. Mm -hmm. um, and so what they do is that they um, enhance what you already know for acting, modeling, singing, um, any talent that you may have. They are actually to enhance um, what you're more interested in. And so I took their classes for acting and I got, um, how should I, how should I say it? I got very motivated onto modeling because of what my friend had mentioned prior. He said, well, I, I'll give it a try. So they got me a couple of gigs and I met through them, um, this company um, called D'Angelo. Uh -huh. These are wedding gowns. Oh. And so I got contracted with them to do wedding gowns um, and special events to walk the runway. Oh, cool. So, so I got involved with that and I was very excited. I said, wow, okay. So it opened up opportunities for me um, with this school. And so I got more into it and to acting. Um, I met my manager, um, her, which is with uh, Hollywood Talent Associates. Yes, I've heard of her. We, I worked with her and uh, we used to work in the same building. Uh, we've met, I see her at the grocery store. So um, I really like her so much. She feels like uh, home because we live near, near each other. So. Um, that's my manager. Cool, um, yeah, she's a very cool lady, yeah. And so she got me very good gigs, um, Hispanic gigs. I got to fly over to Miami for a TV show called Telemundo. Um, the TV show is called Caso Cerrado. So I got to do that Nice, with her. Telemundo. We, also, we all know what that is. Um, <laughs> yes, well, I'm Scott. glad everybody knows about it. So I got to be in that yeah. show, and I got to do a couple of commercials here and there over the years, um, voiceover jobs, and so it's it's a passion that I have for it. Mm -hmm. After many years of just meeting new people and trying something new, so it all started because I wanted to be a voiceover actress. Whoa, yeah, and then you kind of just picked up these other projects and. It just came forward all yeah. on its own, cool. um, from eyelashes <laughs> to dresses. Nice. And um, now I started to model um, wigs, which is exactly what I wanted initially. Oh, so, yeah, because those are so much fun. Oh, yeah. I love changing my hair. Yeah. I try I to change my hair once in a while. You know, now, I don't wear wigs, but, like, yeah. you know, it's always, it, it is fun. It changes the whole way you look, your entire, like, um... I guess uh, character changes in a way. Absolutely. So I love that. Yeah. Um, with this pandemic going on, I actually published, self-published three books. Oh, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you about that. You are an, also an author. That's so that's right. like, you know, that's quite a long uh, resume there. <laughs> well, I mean, just do what you love and have fun with it and see yeah. what is your forte. And so I like exploring new things. I mean, mm -hmm. your 95 shouldn't stop you from living, right? No. Um, we've got all this time, especially now, being in quarantine. can do uh, creative things, projects, videos, like we're doing now. And maybe even, like, you know, uh, you can make a short movie or, or you can do a, a photo shoot, I guess. Um, depending on, no, I don't know, you shouldn't get together with people. You shouldn't really go out to eat much either. So it's kind of hard to, like, meet new people and, or network, I guess. I don't know if you've been networking. I've been networking on the internet. I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, like, not, <laughs> <laughs> nothing crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been networking with the outfits, with t-shirts, um, mm -hmm. pants, leggings, and dresses. Cool. Yeah, I saw your work on Instagram. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Those are awesome. I love them. And 
you um you are very professional and like your your posture is really good thank you yeah but then let's get back to the books how did you get the ideas to write the books and um how did that go about actually i belong to several um facebook groups about mm -hmm. modeling oh and i noticed in san diego there's not an actual modeling uh group for plus size and so right I've been thinking about opening one up, but I still haven't made that jump yet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking of creating a group of girls that wanted to create the group together versus just myself. Mm -hmm. So that this way we can all have a structure of how exactly to make this group work. Um, especially because we want more work um, for plus size. Yeah, definitely. Um... So because yeah. of that specific, that's when I decided to create a book because a lot of the girls that I've talked to actually asked me privately, of course, they have asked me, Stephanie, how do you do it with um, not having to show your body? And what I mean by that is not doing any boudoir type of photos yeah, um, for free or for likes. Right. Um, so I haven't done any boudoir photos for free. <laughs> Good so, for you! Woo! Uh, High five! So because of that, people have asked me, how do you do it? And <laughs> I've been getting so many How do you do questions. it? Yeah. I decided to create a book. I said, you know what? I went, actually, I went to Barnes & Noble. And I went and I asked the register people there and, and any staff member in there, you would ask them, where can you find a modeling book how to um, for us like petite or curvy mm -hmm. and if it, normally it would be in the section of uh, beauty the beauty section mm -hmm. and so they said but we don't have any really yeah, hmm. Hmm. yeah. well as i am um, gone to set man so many seminars over the years i remember that i had gone to one where you can create your own book and they can sponsor you mm -hmm. and so i decided to follow through the steps and guidelines that they have but instead of going through them i created it myself very cool mm -hmm. that's right up my alley like um i love seeing people of my i guess size range in the media and i love seeing them get work and not you know, we don't really confine ourselves. We're just women like any other woman. It's just, I don't like idealizing a certain type of woman. I think we should all be celebrated, you know. It, mm -hmm. It's about time, and it shouldn't be anything new or, um, or way out there. Um, the more exposure, the better, you know. You get exposed to something, it's like it becomes the norm. So, yeah. We had a, a gig coming up regarding the draw photo shoot. Mm -hmm. um, and for that, I am a model for them. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm excited about that, that I'm getting a new contract with special guidelines. I did ask them specifically um, nothing too ranchy or anything like that. It's oh, cool. more of classy type of looking. So I said, yes, I'm willing to do something like that. As long as my guidelines are good with mm -hmm. what I'm requesting, we should be fine. I said, nothing see-through. It's like a bikini. <laughs> I'm okay. Right. Yeah. That's I, that's also something to be proud of. There's nothing wrong with, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I guess um, I, if you're in the industry, it's different than if you're just like, you're um, not pursuing that type of career. And um, then there's no pressure to really like post like half naked photos. I mean, I guess... Yeah, I'm not, not against it. Not or anything like that. Not at all. Yeah. Um, I think that if you want to pursue that type of career, go for it. But like for myself, that I'm not interested in that type of um, career, I'm okay with if, if it's going to be a paying opportunity. Yeah, as long as it's not like all you do, you know? That's not like <laughs> every single picture is of you um, and your tongue or something. I don't know. You don't want that that to be your image if, unless that you're gonna make money that and that's your thing that's like what your exactly. dream is you know yeah then. I think so i think so if you're gonna be exposing yourself for free i mean it's not my forte right it's just you know uh we're all different and we all have our t different tastes so uh, Absolutely. yeah different taste levels or um that's why you know. i created the book because there's so many complaining about it and they kept asking me 
how do you do it? Because if you search my Instagram page, you won't find anything that is exposing my body. You'll cool. call it yeah. a, a bathing suit, but it's I'm fully clothed pretty much. Yeah. And so other than that, people are asking me, how do you do it? Um, <laughs> Just find that funny. Like, you wrote a book. In there. Yeah. All my details, all my secrets, they're right in there. Very nice. So we should pick up your book. Um, yeah, you can actually get it on Amazon. And you know okay. what? It's going to be in a showcase in the San Diego Public Library in the month of February. Sweet. Very cool. Um, that's that's an honor, isn't it? Oh, I'm very excited about it. I've never yeah. had a book in a showcase. To have it there cool. is an honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And then you can always have that up your sleeve. Absolutely. And just, I mean, I, I, I think I'm going to check out your book because um, it sounds like that's something that we needed because, like you said, it wasn't there. So um, I'd definitely be inclined to read something like that, especially if they're, you know, I definitely relate. And if there's a need for it, then that must mean that your voice needs to be heard. Thank you. And you know why? Because of that, I created it in Spanish. Cool. That's so cool. I networked, I networked with one of my good friends who's actually... Um, with a teacher type of thing mm -hmm. and so a director actually for a couple of schools oh and so i worked with with her and we partnered up we decided to create um curvy petite model 101 into spanish and mm -hmm. call it modelo yo um so okay. that this way the girls who speak spanish can actually grab a book too because they're very limited at the bookstores Wow, pick it up while it's there, I'd say. I like having a copy in my hands, however, that's not possible for like most of what I do anyway. So I adjust. I, it's an adjustment, but it, you know, uh, if you're that kind of person that likes to have the physical copy, then pick it up now. Or we'll probably make more afterwards anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, anyway, so let's, uh, let's talk about what advice you can give to people who aren't quite at your level right now. Like, what would you say to somebody who's either just starting out or needs some motivation? Starting out in acting or modeling or in a book. That's which... true. Maybe we should pick one. Or, um... I guess to follow their dreams. Like, what keeps you motivated to follow um, your dreams? You know what? I what keeps me motivated is actually my son, who I actually had a stillbirth back in two thousand and four, and I haven't had been able to get pregnant. And it has been over sixteen years, and I'm just a little scared that it will happen again. And some people can overcome it, but I felt that. If I have a legacy or something that I can actually tell my children, hey, this is what I have, and if I, something happened to me, this is yours. You're going to be having this forever. And so I felt that my book, because my set books, I did put dedicated to my son mm -hmm. and all the curvy women in the world. Aww. And so I actually feel that my son motivates me, although it's been 16 years. Um, because I, at that time, I wasn't able to afford um, to bury him. And then after that, it took me about seven years to get a headstone. It, could, it sounds ridiculous to some people, but if you don't have the means, it can be very challenging to, to your soul. And yeah. so that really, like, it really touched me. So whenever I think about something that I'm going to pursue, I think about my son and I think, you know, if only I could do something that he would be proud of if he was here, then maybe I can create this. Maybe it will be something powerful. So if you're going to pursue anything you want, just keep in mind, what exactly do you feel proud of that? Because yourself, sometimes you don't think you're enough, right? Um, hey, it happens. Yeah, sometimes that happens. So 
you have to think, okay, who exactly motivates you? Who exactly, is it yourself? Is it your loved one? Is it who, who is it? Just see who is the one thing or the one person who you would like for them to see it? And how would you feel when their first expression, what they would tell you? So that's hey, how I see it. Yeah, we're all in this together. So, or what do you want to see happen? Like mm -hmm. as a, an effect of what you're doing and so for me, my books, um, for example, it, if one day I'm not here anymore and my children, my future children are older, they're going to be receiving the incentives of it. So they're yeah. going to be keeping it and they're going to say, hey, my mom made this book and they're still going to be getting money from that. And so I feel yeah, proud of that. I think you're sending a super positive message out there too. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, you are. Definitely. Um, we need people like you to support, to give voice, so that we can all see that we're all different. And so I think of having a variety of um, points of view out in the world is important, not just supporting one side or seeing things one way. And you, you give us an option. And I think that's great and beautiful. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for being on. I wish we could talk longer. I think, um, has it been an hour yet? Let's see. <laughs> you know what? Um, actually, I do want to share something out there. Yeah. Oh, I have noticed a couple of um, avenues or locations on social media where um, people are trying to become models. Mm -hmm. And so they'll go and they'll find people that are just taking pictures but because they just want pictures and, and they're not professional oh, yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah um maybe just like uh taking like pictures in, in outfits that are sort of like uh extraordinary or like out there or something or trying to get attention just just like taking a picture just to take a picture well, let's say i want to become a model right and let's say right. i just started and i wanted to become a model but then I'll reach out to this person and say, hi, I wanna do the, um, I wanna try out being a model with you. Can can we negotiate? Can we connect or work something out? And they'll yeah. go, oh yes. And they'll bring their camera and they'll try to take pictures of my legs or my cleavage or something like that. But they're not real photographers. What? So, no. Yeah, out there, there's a lot of weirdos out there. So I, no. what I really want to say is that um, in order for you to know that they are professional photographers and that they are their photos and that you want to actually try to be a, become a model, a real one, instead of just getting the creepers because they're yeah. definitely out there, um, you can actually ask a few questions. For example, you can ask them, um, have, you, have you taken many pictures and ask them, to show you the pictures and actually uh, create a social media because you know what there's a lot of photographers that don't have a website there's a lot True. and there's a lot of women mm -hmm. that go for it and think oh well we're just gonna try new photos oh my gosh and then they just like try to get them to take their clothes off and stuff and so I uh, how bizarre I, I oh my gosh on social media and i'll find and i'll see those and i go wow this poor person that should have like uh, yeah. asked around to see what exactly how how or when or when or what <laughs> right that's very despicable Ew, it's scary out yeah. there so if you just ask them do you have a website if you don't have a website do you have an instagram page at least just for the portfolio yeah Some type of portfolio out there and if they are saying oh well, i'm brand new and i'm also trying out how to become a, um, a photographer well, it's kind of sketchy if they want you to take new pictures. Yeah. So, so that's very sketchy. I mean, if you're brand new and you're trying it out, I don't know. I, I mean, just don't ask do it. to other models. Ask questions. No, do you're not. Afraid. Yeah, I mean, do ask, ask questions. questions. Yeah. Just ask questions. I mean, you can also ask other models. I am serious. You can mm. ask other models that have worked with them that are being tagged. Hey, have you worked this with this person? How did you feel? 
Because sometimes it can become scary to actually meet up with some of these photographers and are not real. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to put anybody out there. So I just want to be a little bit vague to ask questions. I think that's the most important part. Yeah. um, That can be uh, traumatizing, I think. I would not want that out there. I think with me, I... um, I went to one that I was a little bit skeptical. Mm-hmm. The gentleman asked me to, he said, okay, can you do vintage look? I said, okay, what's a vintage look? What kind of vintage? vintage he said, look. oh, just, just a look. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> what does he mean by that? Okay, well, I'll do a pinup. I'll do my hair pinup and I'll go ahead and I'll wear a nice pinup type of dress. But then he'll start it to do, um, he'll say, oh, can we do your legs, more pictures of your legs? And so can you put on socks? And so I did, I put on socks, but I mean, I wasn't into the um, fetish look. That's what he was saying. Oh, right, yeah. Fetish oh, um, vintage. type of thing. And I was mm-hmm. like, uh, okay, I'll do as much as I can, but I'm not doing more. <laughs> This is vintage fetish. That's right, just vintage. I'm yeah, fine with just vintage. <laughs> like a fine wine. 20s, 1940s, we're cool with that. But yeah. Just be specific what you're okay on doing and just more open air, more where there's more people, that's okay. Okay, yeah, good point. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the more, the more professional and respectful they are, the better probably. And you can you can kind of sense when people are respecting your boundaries, and when they're not. And creative people can sometimes try to stretch the truth or get creative with what you think is real and what's not, or you know, can be very charming or whatnot. I mean, if they have a social media page, you can see all their work and you can see who's yeah. connected, and everything, and that should be fine because you're seeing who's connected with who. Right. So that works and those are okay people that you can work with i think totally but if you don't have no social media you, you you just got a random email saying we're looking for new models vintage <laughs> style red flag <laughs> just think about it first ask questions yeah google their name yeah the better detail in detail and also if they like uh spell things wrong a lot like that's a bad sign if it's in like a professional email you know Mm-hmm. Like uh, actually, yeah. I have asked my manager several times, "Is this legit?" I'll email. Oh, <laughs> so I'll her, is this real? And she'll tell me, "Scam." Okay. I'll oh, say, yeah. wow. Mm-hmm. But I will ask my managers. That's why I said, if you have questions, concerns, ask other models, or like for myself, I ask my manager. But I do ask questions. I do look around and I do search and I do my I do my homework before Good. I go to do any work. Yeah, that's an important message too. You could write a whole book about that, probably. <laughs> Unless it's already in your book, I don't know. But um, yeah, cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, it makes me want to be more professional and like take um, take like situations more seriously where you're working professionally. You know and spot the signs the red flags like listen to them don't don't just you know say oh or make up an excuse like oh vintage style that they're just being vague for artistic purposes or something <laughs> um just like yeah don't make up things in your head just like don't look overlook the signs that this is not okay or I mean, good if you're okay with it that's okay but yeah i mean some people are, are talking about being, I don't know, that they're not interested in certain things, to change categories, and you know, it's a scary world. Yeah. You know, it's a very scary world, and you don't know who you're messing with, or whose house you're going to, so right. just be cautious. And how does the pay thing work? Like, do you ever worry someone's not going to pay you? Um, actually, I'm not worried, because they'll pay me prior. Oh, good, yeah. They'll pay me prior. Um, for and then for the acting, they'll pay me right after. But I'm I'm not scared at all because most of the jobs that I get, I get them from my manager. Right. Yeah, have a manager too. That'll help. 
Absolutely, I think that's very important. That's the reason why um, I joined the, what, it's called the, I forgot, I don't, can't believe it. <laughs> Let's see, what could it be? Hmm. The industry network. <laughs> what network? The industry network. Oh. It's the industry network and it's a showcase. So what okay. you do with this showcase, you go compete with other people around the world in this showcase mm -hmm. called the industry network. Can't believe I forgot. Um, but it has been about a year, year and a half when I went there. Mm -hmm. um, it was up in Los Angeles, and you compete with music or singing or modeling or acting. There's actually a couple of videos on my YouTube video oh. um, where you can see it, and I'm actually in the showcase. So I did some acting there, and I did some modeling. Cool. And so I did that because I wanted to get a manager in Los Angeles, Miami, and um, New York, and I got one. Oh, nice. So I have one here in San Diego and I have one around the States nice. so that I can get more work. And which I did. I got one um, over in Atlanta recently with this pandemic. Whoa, very cool. And how do you find the right manager? Um, so, so how do you weed them out? Because I did the competition, the industry network, mm -hmm. and um, I competed versus other people and I got top 10. Oh, um, cool. On the plus side, so honorably mentioned. That's nice. what you see it on my Instagram page. Honorably mentioned by the industry network. Very mm -hmm. cool! Wow, congratulations! Thank you. The yeah. people who, who connected me there was Tower Talent Studio West. Oh, okay. Nice. The ones who connected me with them because they do a lot of TV shows. Mm -hmm. So they, I needed that. I said, oh, you know what? I would like to do a couple of sitcoms. That will be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like fun. Sounds like that's the direction you're going in then. That's what you'd like to do. <laughs> Eventually, someday, this, that will be great. Yeah. You'll be the next Eva Longoria. <laughs> Except better. <laughs> no, I could be the neighbor. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey. The neighbor. But the neighbor. I with her. I could have with her. <laughs> okay. You know? Yeah be the next one i want to work with her all oh, right you'll be different you'll, you'll be like your own uh character on the show who has a backstory and lives next door to Eva longoria you won't be the next i see what you're saying because mm -hmm. she's still hot and like working right yeah yeah she's yeah so i think right now she's doing that um the singing show um um something about america's uh, no 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 america's, <laughs> america's got talent Yes, oh. what is it called? Got, Mer got, talent? got Talent? She's doing That's that. Right. Oh, okay. They're wrapping up the show, or I think they already ended it. So okay. She's doing that show. Oh, all right. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great career path to follow, though, I just mean. Like. <laughs> but eventually, that could be in the next five years. Um, I'm just really glad that you came on the show, and um, I just want to see where you, how you grow, and see what you do and I think you're a really great person to follow so tell us where can we find you online online on social media I actually have Instagram Facebook and Twitter I have a TikTok account and I have my website which is stephaniealeman.net cool and on the social media all the platforms you can find me at stephanie.aleman.sd sweet Oh my gosh, I don't want this to end. What was that? It's for San Diego. Oh, wait. What's for San Diego? Stephanie.alemansd. Oh, .sd. Sweet. Yes, I see. I see. Shout out San Diego. Born and raised. Nice. I was raised. Um, but I've been here a long time. <laughs> I know my way around. Anyway, it's so cool um, that you're from San Diego and we're doing this remotely. <laughs> it's okay. No, that's cool. Thanks so much for being on the show. I almost don't want it to end. I don't want it to end. But let's, uh, let's say our farewell and hopefully I'll catch you soon. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for being on. Ciao. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. 